Congresswoman Legere Fernandez, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much, Gwyneth, for having me here. Well, I wanna ask you first, sort of a broad question, what are you most proud of accomplishing since you've been in Congress? Thank you for that question. The reality is it has been an incredibly productive 22 months. They say that we have gotten more done in this congressional session than probably the New Deal. But what I'm most proud of, uh, I can't choose one, but let me start. What I'm most proud of is, of course, the Hermit's Peak Fire Assistance Bill, because that was such a long shot. Um, people didn't think we'd be able to get it done, but I knew that I was not gonna stop until I could get compensation for all those families and businesses who had lost so much. And I knew I had to make it happen, and we did. Uh, $2.5 billion as just the first installment on what we need to recover to rise from the ashes. And you know what? This is what justice looks like. When the government messes up, when they destroy so many homes and livelihoods, they should say, Yes, it's our responsibility to take responsibility and then to pay the damages. And that's what happened, and it doesn't happen very often, but we actually are delivering justice at the same time that we're delivering hope. I wanna make sure that these communities know that hope is on the way, resources on the way, because normally, in a normal disaster, if your house is tossed away by a storm in a hurricane or burnt down in a regular wildfire, all FEMA can do is pay you about $30,000. Well, that doesn't help you rebuild. But in this instance, it was a man-made disaster, and so that's why we were able to secure full compensation. And that, of course, is pretty fantastic. And of course, you know, I introduced the bill in the house and made sure every one of our colleagues knew of the disaster and knew what had happened so they could support me in getting it done. And I'm very thankful to Senator Ben Ray Lujan, who introduced it in the Senate, and both he and Senator Heinrich made sure they got it through the Senate. My job was getting it out of the House. You know, I got it out of the House three times. <laughs> you know, we passed that bill three times. You know, but there's so much other work that we've done, you know, from making sure that we deliver water across my district. So from Navajo, where there are too many families without any running water, which is ridiculous and unacceptable, to the Eastern New Mexico Water Project, where there are a lot of straws dipped into that Ogallala aquifer, and it's drying up. And so we are bringing, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars to water projects all across my district, not just those two very big ones. We're helping our sequias. We're making sure that the water flows because when the water flows, New Mexico grows. Well, I wanna talk about money flowing. <laughs> Inflation keeps going up, mm -hmm. making the cost of everyday items just higher and higher every time you buy them. What have you done to fight inflation? You know, it's not right. When New Mexican families, hardworking New Mexican families, have to take groceries out of their car, when greedy CEOs of the biggest corporations are putting record profits into their pockets. Um, you know, it's a big state. It costs a lot of money to fill up your tank to get from one place to another in our state, and it hurts. We also know that a lot of the inflation is caused by three key things. Putin's war and its impact on oil and gas prices, the supply chain problems brought about by the pandemic. And as I mentioned earlier, we have large corporations who might have had a slight rise in uh, costs, uh, maybe 8% costs, and I could name them for you, but then they are earning 200% profit. That is simply not right. So what have I done in Congress? Uh, I voted for the Inflation Reduction Act. And the Inflation Reduction Act is gonna start bringing down the costs of health insurance premiums. We are locking in lower costs of health insurance premiums. That allows families to have more money, right? Because they're not paying as much for the health insurance. It is gonna put a cap on prescription drug prices for seniors, and it's gonna lower energy costs as well for families. And this summer, I passed the, uh, we passed out of the house, the a consumer price gouging bill, um, and importantly, about the supply chain problems. We need to make in the United States what we need here. And what I say 
is let's make it in New Mexico. So we passed the Chips and Science Act. And the Chips and Science Act is gonna address the supply chain issues with regards to chips and a lot of other products. It is talking about investing in manufacturing here. And I want it to invest in manufacturing in New Mexico, in my district, because we have what it takes, right? We have skilled workers that we can use. We are a transition economy. We have really wonderful universities and colleges, and we wrote that law. I made sure it had provisions that prioritize New Mexico uh, so that we actually use our labs, use uh, our colleges and universities. And so I want us, uh, there's 10 innovation hubs that's gonna, uh, they're going to come out of that law. I want one of them to be in New Mexico and we're working really hard to have that happen. So I want us to have an enchanted innovation <laughs> hub here in New Mexico. We do have a lot of talent here. Um, you know, the average home price in Santa Fe is right now more than half a million dollars. Um, and that's high, <laughs> right? Mm. So what specific steps have you taken to make housing more affordable for New Mexicans across the state? Exactly. Well, you know, before I uh, got elected to Congress, I served for about 23 years as uh, with HomeRise, whose job it is, it's award-winning, its job it is to help New Mexicans get into affordable housing. And I was part of a group that came up with about $150 billion for affordable housing, for housing. Homelessness is also a problem. Rising rents is a problem. We do not have enough stock. Uh, we passed that out of the House. Unfortunately, the Senate stripped it out of the bill. But I'm not ending there. That's my $150 billion to-do list. But what I'm actually doing is we have increased uh, appropriations for housing. I have two housing projects as part of my community-supported projects. One is workforce housing. Everywhere I go, in rural areas, we need workforce housing. So one is in Cuba, because we need to be able to have housing for health professionals who go up there. Another one is we are putting $750,000 into a pilot project right here in New Mexico so that we can provide families with down payment assistance. Right, a mortgage credit doesn't help you. You don't need it on April 15th. You need it when you're closing your loan. And so we have $750,000. That's gonna be a pilot project to use like a, a down payment voucher that you can use then. That will help people buy their homes when they need it. We also need to bring down, as I mentioned earlier, the price of goods to build a home. And we are working on that, as I said, to try to address the supply chain problems, and those prices have started to come down. We need them to come down more. But this is a focus, because nowhere in my district, everywhere in my district, it's housing. But I actually bring a lot of expertise about housing to the job in Congress. That's the thing, I have a lot of experience that is making a difference in Congress, because I can bring that experience and apply it to my work for my district in Congress. Okay, change of topic, abortion. Why do you think we should not get in the way of access to abortions after 15 weeks. I believe, as most New Mexicans do, that we need to trust women to make decisions about their health care, including their reproductive health care, and whether to secure an abortion or not. We need to trust women to make that decision with their family, with their faith, with their doctors, without governmental interference, because it's a very complex decision that involves multiple things, including you know, health issues, that we cannot make it from afar. And as I said, I trust women to make that decision. It's a health decision. You live in Santa Fe, which has more artists and people with PhDs than any other city of its size. Nearly half the city's economy is tied back to arts and culture. But after redistricting, the third congressional district now goes all the way down to the southeastern corner of the state, which makes its money in oil and gas and ranching, totally different industries, different culture. How would you persuade a Roswell Republican to vote for you? I am a daughter of rural New Mexico. I understand rural issues very well. My district right now is a rural, is a rural district. I am a champion of rural issues in Congress, and that's why I actually have a whole pamphlet of all the money and all the resources we are bringing to ranchers, to farmers, to our You know, there are some really good programs that I have championed that we are bringing to rural New Mexico. 
And as a daughter of New Mexico, I understand those issues. You know, I was flipping burgers at my uncle's rodeo, you know, and, uh, you know, riding the mule, uh, which is a very old timey uh, farm equipment. Like I get these issues and I've been working on these issues, not just for the last two years, but my entire career has been dedicated to building rural health clinics, to addressing issues in rural New Mexico. So those issues are the same uh, as my present district. Congresswoman, thank you so much for spending this time with us today. Well, thank you so much, Gwyneth and PBS for having me.